are the humble hard drive, working overtime to handle all our documents and files, software installers and personal archives. But as our data amplifies in volume, so does our need for speed. Today we're stepping into the fast lane to redefine your computing experience, so we can put to rest these annoying glitches. Sorry, the hard drive can only spin so fast. Say goodbye to the hard drive speed limit, and hello to the raw power of RAID 0 with the Gigabyte Aorus Gen 4 PCIe NVMe adapter. But more on that soon. But for now, what are some really good methods to power your workflow? We well, could get some Samsung 870 EVO SSDs. In fact, we will have a future video on this, trying to expand by 8 terabytes on the HP Z840. The SSD sure make a great addition to your daily workflow, but for today we have something even better, which is NVMEs. Now you may be familiar, the typical M.2 NVMe usually obtained between 2,000 and maybe up to like 14,000 megabytes per second, pretty fast. Definitely be aware of the different sizing for NVMEs, and the one featured in today's video is going to be a 2280, but take note, these are non-volatile memory. Very easy to fit, usually we just take a screwdriver and butcher the screw that keeps the NVMe in place. Why'd they butcher the screw? Never mind. Uh, remind me to do a review on some screwdrivers in the future too. But key detail, NVMEs do not like temperature and typically 75 degrees is sort of a good limit before they start to throttle. So we'll keep an eye out for that as well. But how do we control the thermals? How do we even select the best NVMe? Well, check out these PCIe 5.0 NVMEs which could make for great additions. They're all one terabyte in terms of sizing and pricing. Take note, the pricing's a little bit dated now. Apologies, it's in May. But nonetheless, still a really good list of NVMEs that you could obtain for your system. Now between PCIe 5, PCIe 4, and PCIe 3, you've got some really solid options. Now right now, I am currently using the Samsung 980, the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, and as you will see in the video today, we're going to upgrade to the ADATA Legend 800 NVMe. After breaking the piggy bank, there are four of them that are fired up and ready to go into a PCIe adapter. But we need to decide on the adapter, and if you've seen my past video, we actually tested four different adapters. But for today, there's a little bit of bonus content. This is the old master 5.25 inch hard drive expansion bay. We can fit this into a typical, should we say, CD or DVD writer slot, and that gives you the option to fit quite a lot of extra storage space. But take note, these are limited to hard drives and SSDs, so how do we fit our NVMe drive, which is way, way faster? Well, stay tuned, future video, we'll absolutely look at installing those 870 EVOs into the HP Z840 and one of these adapters. But it doesn't stop there because there's actually another adapter, which I'm going to argue might be better, although no, from the future, maybe not. Maybe the old master's still better. Uh, we'll definitely try and persuade you on that later. But for now, let's check out the other adapter, which is, definitely a thumbs up to the old master, another old master adapter. Now the key benefit on this adapter is price. It's a little bit cheaper than some of the competitors that are out there. But absolutely, you get some really cool adapters for your 5.25 inch base. But take note, the HPZ in particular, the one that we're using today, only has two 5.25 inch base. Uh, so we are somewhat limited on the expansion, but hey, I guess we could run this one and the other. Key benefit on this one, there are four base, they are hot swappable, and we have the ability to access them from the front. For now, hold onto your hardware, secure those loose RAM module clips, Ram up that CPU and let's get those PCI slots filled with something that has no speed limiter? Well, we'll check that in the benching later. If you haven't already got up to speed, check out my related video on how PCI slots work, or even the highlights on the Quad PCIe Adapter Shootout. That way you can retire those hard drives back where they came from. Wait. Do people actually store their hardware outside the PC case for them to end up in the dirt like this? Intriguing. Previously, we looked at four NVMEs, four NVMe adapters, and we did some quick benching. But this time we're gonna do a deep dive on one of them. Check this out. Yes, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. NVMe adapter shootout, we're focusing on the Gigabyte Aorus in particular. 
very solid looking NVMe adapter to hopefully suit your needs. Let's quickly supercharge our screwdriver and launch right in. First things first, we need to remove the back plate to install these NVMEs. And we have six screws to remove. They're all very well embedded within the casing. Uh, very quick removal there. Let's see what's underneath. Very stylish looking aluminium design and quite a nice extruded finish there. A little bit of dust, we'll clear that off later. But for now, check it out. There is the PCB that supports all the magic. That is four NVMEs on an X16 PCI slot. These four screws, oh, pretty cool. There's a little spark there. There it is, are really important because they keep the actual casing together. So once we remove this, we will separate the well, hopefully separate. If you look at that, that's got a little bit of tension behind it there. Uh, gentle pressure does it. You want to apply a little bit of pressure. You'll see I move my hands forward slightly to spread the tension more evenly. Uh, haven't found a better method than this. Keep the pressure for a little while and eventually, whoa, it pops just like that. Easy. Now we get to have a good look at this particular casing. Very, very chunky copper heatsink there to help dissipate heat. And we have a nice fan inlet. With a little bit of shrouding as well, but let's go for it. What NVMe are we installing? Well, we're going to install four of the ADATA Legend 800 2 terabyte NVMe's. Why four? Why this adapter? So many questions. Check one of the previous videos for more detail, but the ADATA Legend's quite a cool NVMe. We're looking at Gen 4 and M.2 interface, 2280 in terms of size or form factor, and uh, there it is. Four NVMEs, Gigabyte AORUS adapter, very, very straightforward, and we'll throw that cover back on. It's a very delicate, whoa, very delicate balance there. Thankfully, I caught that just in time. That was too close. Wouldn't, uh, no wonder it has so many scratches on it. But there it is, four NVMEs. How do we close this up? Well, before we do, we do need to mount the NVMEs with one of these very handy NVME screws. Once we've got these fully secured, we will be able to reassemble the casing. So pretty straightforward, easy flying. But while we're here, let's inspect this casing a little bit closer here. This particular one is a very, very chunky 5.5 millimeter, I do believe, copper heatsink with fan cowlies that allow some of the air to pass through for improved cooling. Now let's grab our screws of interest and very quickly we'll try and reassemble. Now take care of these screws. You do want to apply a light force to the PCB to try and help it seat correctly. Otherwise you could potentially uh, just not find your thread. But there it is. Now this particular one, we'll wipe off that dust while we're here. You do need to mount this uh, after mounting the first one and obviously make sure you do apply that back plate. Otherwise you'll find you're running short on thread on these. But there it is, all mounted, re-secured, and looking spectacular, minus the damage. Some of the damage wasn't my fault, I promise. Pick this up second hand. Talking about second hand, they're hard to find these days, you'll have to keep an eye. Now what's it going into? Well, that is the HPZ 840 workstation. Fully kitted out and doing a really good job in terms of creating video content. If you want to know more about that one, check out some related videos where we installed some upgraded coolers. Those are the HPZ coolers, as well as the RTX 3090 Ti, the Zotac Extreme Holo, pretty powerful GPU. And don't ask me what's protruding from the case. That's another video. Check it out in a related one, a 10 gigabit Ethernet card. But let's do it. Benching and testing. How does this perform with our NVMEs? Now, quite a few tests here. We're going for a software bench real world file transfers and a little bit of data logging in the background with hardware info. Now doing Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test, ATTO or ATO Disk Benchmark, Crystal Disk Mark and two file transfers, 80 gig as well as another. But before we can do that we need to set up our RAID. So how do we do this on Windows? That's right I'm a Windows user, forgive me for that. But let's go for a stripped volume in disk management within Windows 10 in my case. We're going to add all four of these NVMEs to our particular volume and we're going to name it RAID 1 Stripe. Not because it's RAID 1, but just because it's the first test that I need to do. There will be four of these coming out for independent tests, but technically it's a RAID 0, so keep that in mind. Uh, Stripe, right? Okay, there it is. Mix file transfer, 80 gigabytes of 4K video. How well does it perform? Now, keep in mind, we have pulled four NVMEs this should give us really good speed, or at least I'm hopeful. Let's see how it performs on a real life file transfer. 
Okay, not quite as high as I would have expected, but we're averaging somewhere around maybe 180, 190 megabytes per second, or that's around 1400 megabits per second if you're that way inclined. Uh, it's not too bad, but definitely not as high as I would have expected from this adapter, given the spec of those NVMEs in a RAID 0. Now keep in mind of RAID 0, we should see some phenomenal speeds, hence the whole purpose of pulling those drives together. But next one, ATTO Disk Benchmark. How will our NVMEs fare in this benchmark? Hopefully just as good, maybe better. There it is. Now for this particular test, it's going to send packets over to our NVMEs in different sizes. Now depending on the size of the packet, we're going to see a slight performance change. Generally larger packets tend to be a little bit more efficient. But again, that's going to be highly variable depending on your system. And obviously the presence of DRAM is a huge bonus. Although this particular NVMe that I'm using does not have any. It's got a host bus, a host memory buffer instead. Okay, next test, Black Magic Design. How's it gonna fare in this test? Really cool, highly recommend that you give this one a test run as well. Very, very useful software, uh, particularly because I use DaVinci Resolve for editing. It's just a perfect fit. Well, let's see how well this works. There it is. Okay, now this is a number we can all understand. Around 2700 megabytes per second on read and more or less on write. You'll see the read speed and the write speed are slightly variable. And I suspect that's again due to the lack of DRAM on this particular set of NVMEs. Uh, so hopefully not too big a deal, particularly for video editing, which will be my primary application. Yours may vary, but next test, Crystal Disk Mark. Now this one's a gold standard, cannot go wrong, and you'll see really good speeds here between our different test conditions. And overall, that's a pretty solid speed. But there is a problem. Right now, the speeds we are obtaining are pretty close to the published speeds for these NVMEs. Maybe a little bit of a gain on the write speed. Now that does leave us with a question. Let's go back to our test machine and figure out why this might be. Take another specifications while we're there. Now we're using the Aorus within slot 6 of the HP Z840, which is an X16 PCIe 3.0 slot that should be able to handle some pretty decent speeds, even though it's on the older interface. And take note, it is bifurcated, check out related video. Now RAID 0 splits data across multiple drives, which can result in improved performance. Now talking about data, really important, particularly when the community is really hammering on data accuracy. Uh, sorry to see that there, Linus Tech Tips, but I'm sure they'll recover. Let's compare data. Previous tests that we did, we found interesting speed differences between the quad adapter shootout. Now this is a separate, separate data set that is related to this data set because we're still testing the same NVMEs. But take note, the speed there was still around 3,500 megabytes read and write for the Gigabyte Aorus, which is substantially lower than the other adapters. So I've reproduced that result which is kind of interesting, but let's do some quick conclusions on this particular data set. Take note of the speeds, we'll compare these for the other adapters in future videos. Uh, omitted the one gigabyte file transfer due to viewing pleasure. It's a little bit boring watching that. But so far, three independent tests, we're seeing the same rather slow speed for this particular adapter. So definitely querying why that might be an absolute puzzle from a technical standpoint. Now for thermals. Using hardware info data logging, we can compare our Gigabyte Aorus to another adapter. This one is the Jehe air-cooled NVMe adapter, which only fits one NVMe, but it's had a modification. I added some thermally conductive silicone, about 1.5 mil underneath, and around 10 mil of thermal silicone on top of the NVMe to give us some really, really good thermals on a budget. It's only like 35 US dollars for this adapter all up. So definitely a worthy contender to the Gigabyte Aorus. The question is which one has better thermal management? I'm hopeful the JE can perform. It's really affordable, but let's look at the data. Looking at our first data, we've got the minimum NVMe temperatures and it clearly looks like the Gigabyte Aorus outperformed here with a lower minimum temperature recorded. By comparing that to the maximum, it's a complete different story. The JE actually outperformed on the NVMe temperature, but not on the hotspot temperature, which is interesting. And looking at the average temperatures, overall they're fairly similar, but it does look like the Aorus wins on the hotspot temperature. The question remains, why is it slower on RAID 0? 
but I'm sure in future content we will figure out what's cooking with this adapter and talking about future content take note the HPZ Turbo Drive Quad Pro will be the next one in the lineup we're going to go through in a bit more detail we will also review the Aramax 96-bit screwdriver kit you can see those on Amazon take it easy out there stay tuned don't forget to subscribe I'll see you on a future video